Welcome to the latest podcast from the Plastic Surgery Journal Club. Each month we review and appraise a journal article, typically from PRS, and summarize it for you in this short podcast. The full journal can be obtained from the PRS website. Hi, and welcome to the July 27, 2016 Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery Journal Club coming to you from Sydney, Australia. My name is Damien Marucci, and I'm with Dr. Harith Alani, uh, who is one of the registrars currently working at the Children's Hospital of Westmead. Um, the first paper we discussed was from the July 2016 PRS, defining the role of secondary intention healing in full thickness lid margin defects and it is out of Liverpool in the United Kingdom. Um, Harith, what was this paper about in a nutshell? Uh, it's a case series of 34 patients with lower lid full thickness marginal defects post-tumor excision treated conservatively. This article builds, builds on earlier work published 30 years ago by the same author in which all the defects were left to heal by secondary intention. So after excision, the, the surgeon uh, applied dressing for four to eight hours. Then after that, the dressing was removed and they continued with chloramphenicol ointment to be applied three times a day for about two weeks. Out of 34 patients, 32 showed satisfactory results, especially if the lesion was on the medial third of the lower lid. And there was an average loss of about one to two millimeters in, in vertical direction. And the healing eyelid uh, was thin and membranous, uh, lacking tarsal plate. Uh, they set criteria about selecting the patients and they think that former reconstructive techniques still might be needed in patients with high risk of corneal exposure like proptosis or facial palsy. Also when the defect is on the central and lateral part, it's better to be reconstructed to get, to get a better cosmetic result. And in recurrent cases, also reconstruction is, uh, is uh, beneficial. Now, so what did you think of this paper? All right, so I think it's an imp- interesting paper. It's, uh, it's, introducing... it's certainly very different to sort of traditional teaching. Yes, yeah, because we, we usually we usually taught that we should, we should replace like with like and, and reconstruct the eyelid uh, uh, anterior lamella and posterior lamella. Yeah. But this, this, uh, this uh, article introduces a simple way of lower lid defect management. There is no donor site morbidity. And at any time, if the reconstructive, uh, if, if the outcome is unsatisfactory, then still we have the full range of reconstructive options to be done. In fact, we might end up with a smaller defect to be reconstructed in an easier way. Exactly, and that's something that was brought up a few times uh, during the Journal Club this evening. The people were saying, well, look, you don't sort of lose anything by not reconstructing, trying this laissez-faire technique, as the author describes it, and then should the result be suboptimal, you can then go back and do your trippier flap or your McGregor flap or whatever other flap um, uh, that you may want to use. What I thought was particularly interesting was that even defects involving the inferior uh, canaliculus uh, were not reconstructed and uh, that there were no issues uh, with Epiphora. So overall, this was a very interesting paper and certainly might be something that surgeons might want to try. I guess initially probably for elderly patients who you might, want to, you might not want to subject to a, uh, a particularly onerous lower eyelid reconstruction. Yep, I think it's introducing a very, uh, very good option for our reconstructive ladder and maybe bigger series can give better, uh, more confirmed uh, indications in the future. Thank you for listening. For more of our podcasts, head to soundcloud.com or subscribe to us on iTunes and search Plastic Surgery Journals. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thanks also to the PRS Journal team for their ongoing support.